Okay, so I said I was going to do a follow-up video on this caboose um, because I've done a few things to it. Um, so pe some people were asking how you take it apart. Let's so use a small screwdriver, go right underneath the bay window and the frame, and press down and carefully twist. You can see a little nub on each side. And then you'll carefully flip it over. This box will break off very easily. I had to glue it on several times. Stick the screwdriver down in. Twist. And if for some reason that doesn't get it, I would just try to get a hold of the trucks and gently just wiggle until it comes up and off. So right now it's off. And I spun around backward from my last video. Don't let that confuse you. Now I'm going to go through just basically uh, the first steps. So I may be repeating myself. The first steps were to, you know, just so there's not confusion, I am going to flip this around. All right, so this is the same way that it was positioned in the video. Um, the first step was to go ahead and take both the black wires off of this is your function zero just like on any other decoder for your headlight and your rear light um, and then what I had done is put a 1000 ohm resistor in line and they were attached over here and I'll get to that and then what I had said before is I had a harness part of a harness that I had tied both the red wires into um, I believe they are were down at the end yeah both the red ones were down at this end and they have those plastic little pieces I always get rid of those and solder it's just a much better connection so it's getting its 14 volt power off of this blue wire just like before but this wire keeps going down to it's gonna be a little hard to see but this big black piece right here is the soundtrack tsunami 2 um, I'm sorry it's a current keeper 2 is what they call it the long narrow one it just took up too much space and it was going to run into things so I um, that's the first one I tried and I thought this would be a, uh, a good unit to try it on it's not as long it's a little wider okay so the reason I'm going to kind of jump it around but the reason I moved those two wires over to the other side okay when you consist this caboose, the sound caboose, to the locomotive, and you're going forward, and like I said, it's consisted, so you turn on your function zero, and suppose the back, the back light's flashing, and then your, your freight cars are in front. Okay when you change directions on your locomotive so does the output on the caboose and then this side is going to light up and it's going to be the side that the freight's on and I was thinking to myself well what good is that so those two functions right there uh, are function three 
and four. So that's all I did is move from these pads over to these pads. That's all that changed. And still using that harness. That harness is for the current keeper. So there's no room to put a current keeper above it. Um, I was having trouble getting the magnet or getting this decoder to see the magnet. And I'm using the Soundtracks magnet. Uh, so I call this, this, it's black, but I've painted the inside a green color like you'd find in an actual one. I had to put these little, it's kind of hard to see, a point to it. It's almost a tenth of an inch of styrene uh, strip, and then it's it's actually two forty thousandths pieces stacked on top of each other, and then this piece does pull out and it has little nubs. I'd cut those flush, and then just put everything stacked it on top, and you know glued everything. Um, and now I've never had a problem because the board is closer to the roof okay now going back to these lights I did tinker with this a little bit more and what I had done is you can see there's there's a screw down in here Phillips if you were to loosen that and then don't pull on the wire but you can gently just gent make sure it can move first by taking something small like a, a very small screwdriver like this and going between the plastic once this retainer is removed go between the plastic that's part of the bottom of the roof and that board and it should should move a little bit now if it doesn't I would carefully remove that this board. It'll it'll lift up and clean that out a little bit. Uh, when they assemble these things, they're not. There's nothing to position that board perfectly where it needs to be for the light pipe. That is one of the, that's one of the two main reasons. I mean, the light pipe is pretty sad. It's. I'm going to go on record as saying Atherin did a really bad job on this. I mean, it has detail. It looks great. But uh, Soundtracks is really going to take a black eye, I guess, and, and CE for that matter, because the resistor uh, that Atherin agreed on is too low for one, so that's why I bypassed it with these LED, these... Uh, resistors to get the brighter LED but that board has to be positioned just right over that light pipe or you're not going to get the full p potential of um, the marker lights so when you go in to the um, well it comes from the factory where they just turn on or off so what I did is I just laid uh, a piece of paper on say this track and put the locomotive or the uh, caboose on this track fired it up had everything loose the way I'm talking about and then you want something non-metallic you do not want to short your decoder out when your lights are on and you reassemble this and you can tighten down the screw but you actually should be able to move this board slightly when you've got your, um, in this case, toothpick. It can be plastic, just not metal. And at the same time, you're looking at the end as you're moving this. And when you get it to a position where you you'll see it, you've got it to the position where it's the brightest, Sometimes you'll let go and it'll move a little bit, but you'll kind of see where it has to has to go to get the full brightness. At that point, I just back away completely and I'll get a 
you can use another toothpick if you wanted to and put some Elmer's glue on it and then just go back in there and make sure you go between the board and this yellow retainer and it's not going to hurt it to you know be a, be a little generous you wouldn't need more than a full drop for sure and then as you've carefully dabbed that on say like both sides then come back make sure that that's just as bright or be watching as, as you dab that and then when you get one done uh, go away take a good hour at least let it dry because if you start fidgeting with the other one a good chance you're gonna put some stress on the wire and it's gonna move that board okay an hour later you come back it's clear like this one you don't see any of the white from the Elmer's glue or whatever glue you're using but I would recommend something that solidifies and don't go as extreme as CA but Elmer's is, seems like a good choice it's not it's um, it dries hard enough I wouldn't use something gooey just because well you don't want that board moving and then repeat for this side you wiggle that around and as you're doing so with it on the track check it and when you get that full brightness you'll know when the, you're basically just aligning the LED with the light pipe and then when it's set again go ahead and carefully you don't even really have to touch the board you can touch the yellow retainer on the inside go around with the Elmer's and avoid the wire and just see that it it just kind of gravity you pull it down and make sure that it's just touching the board and then at that point again just you gotta have patience you gotta just let it go leave for at least an hour come back and once it's uh, you don't see any white in there you know that it has uh, fully cured okay so that's the alignment of the lights now what I did and you don't have to do this I kind of went extreme I think Soundtracks has a better cube speaker. Now when you get it from the factory, it looks very similar to what I have. But at the top of the stack here in the middle, there's going to be two screws at both ends. And you'll have to lift this off. It, like I said, it just has pegs holding it in there. And if you don't have a problem with your wand going across the top, you don't have to raise this the way I did. I just was not having any luck. For some reason, the magnet wasn't picking up. Anyway, with, the, with this set off to the side a little bit, because these wires will be running through it, you can remove the speaker. Um, I stripped mine down totally. Now, it's up to you if you want to do that. It's safer. But that box, once you remove the, the speaker, will be it'll have a, a plastic retainer that comes off the top. And then the speaker will lift right out. And this will basically be a box with four sides and a bottom, but an open top. And what you want to do is go with nothing larger than a quarter inch drill and go inside that box. And you want to carefully drill through the bottom. Now you don't want, you kind of want to have some restraint or a drill press or something and, and carefully tape off whatever so it doesn't get marred. But this rod right here, you want to be careful not to just come blasting through because you're going to, you're going to hit that and damage it. Um, I think mine actually broke and I went back and fixed it. I did a slot on my mill, but I'm just saying you, you're going to want to poke like at least three holes through there. And the distance between these main members I don't know how, if this is catching it as well. Yeah, you can see it back here. See this member and this member. They continue on. 
and it's about a quarter inch between there so I'm saying you, you want to drill through but as soon as you poke through the material you don't have to just keep going where it's going to damage the sides of those structures or if you keep going even further it's going to hit this rod and break it now you can see on mine like I said I did a slot and that's the the soundtrack speaker I think that it sounds just a little bit better but we're talking it's so minute that I wouldn't go to the same extreme that I did you will get a little more volume out of it though I'm just letting you know and I prefer the slot because that gives me just a little more surface uh, a little more area for the the sound to come out okay so I had milled mine flat and then I used little standoffs around the through well four sides I left the corners these corners open so I went ahead and soldered this the two speaker wires and then glued this down to the base and then put some Elmer's to fill those two tiny little holes and then I had it totally well not totally but basically from here up disassembled and pulled the trucks off um, and then taped taped off from here right that line all the way around with uh, took a sheet of paper cut a big rectangle and then just used like masking tape down on this surface and then I sprayed everything black uh, I did redo the wire on the trucks just so when it's harder to see them through the windows uh, when they're black and they come one's black and one's red well, I swapped them out both out with it's kind of a thinner wire um, yeah it's completely up to you you could probably paint the red one black if you wanted but I said it's got windows on it I know it looks like a really bad paint job but when it's assembled and you're looking in um, I kind of wish I went with a darker I know the seats you know any Chessie fans gonna look at this and say oh the seats are black and all that but I wanted to be able to look through the windows and, and recognize something and when things are black inside here um, those are the things that I don't care about like I don't want this current keeper to you know to be it comes white and it says current keeper 2 on the sound uh, soundtracks current keeper 2 on the side of it uh, same with well, the speaker was already black but I hit everything and then I went back and I just touched this up with like a beige and some aluminum just to give it some character. And then I tried to find the closest color I could to the pictures I saw for the inside of a caboose of a chassis. And uh, you're not going to see the roof because of everything that's above here. So I just kind of went along the edge there with the green. So basically, when you look through the windows, um, that's all you're going to see is some chairs, the, the, the table, and then the walls. And I used um, um, Tamaya, Tamiya, however it's pronounced. That's, that's, that paint works really good. So that's what I used for the, all the different colors. Um, obviously, the green is, is uh, gloss. And like I said, it looks a bit rough here, but when it's assembled, it it's uh, it looks nice looking through the windows and just seeing some of that. Because there are, I'm not sure, probably not going to pick up on camera. There's a light here. There's one here, which really doesn't do anybody any good with my speaker or the factory setup because the light really can't get around it this the speaker's kind of too close to it and then there's another a third light right here uh so anyway that's that's everything i did to mine 
but like I said, yours, again, if you want to keep it, you could, I guess you could program this, but I just, I just tested function three and four and said, hey, that works. That way I can just hit on my command station, which light do I want on, and um, just turn that one on and leave it alone. And then the only other time I should need that address up is if I want to blow the whistle. Um, because if you do the intelligent consist with the magnet, it's, it's going to consist with your locomotive. I just didn't want the marker light changing on me if I go in reverse on my train. So the other thing I learned is you cannot have, this is the address of the caboose. You cannot have the address of the caboose active on a dual throttle like this along with the locomotive this is the locomotive so if I were to consist this um, it works fine up until you apply the brakes which is F11 and when you do that you're gonna get the brakes engaging and then the air let off the brakes engaging and the air let off and it's just gonna keep doing it because you got two addresses that are active so what I usually do is I'll pull up the caboose I'll set the either the three or four for my marker light and then I'll go ahead and uh, go loco and dispatch I'll just it dumps it unless you're gonna blow the rear uh, whistle you don't need that address up it's gonna do all the the sounds that uh, you would need it to do um, or you can leave it on just know that if you apply the brakes it's getting like two different um, set of instructions one from the train and then one from this address for your caboose and it kind of confuses things so it, that's why it goes into a loop any of the sound cars will do the same thing so just know that um, so with that said, I'll go ahead and stick this on the rail real quick. Uh, like I said, I was I wanted to follow up, show you guys how it comes apart, what I've done. Like I said before, I just had a little pigtail here, but this time I did go ahead and just cut it, add the red wire onto this blue one that goes down to the current keeper. That way I can hit a dirty spot in the track or whatever. It's not going to cut out on me and I really like that feature and that's what the sound version has and the sound car decoder has that as well alright so I've got the address still on the decoder so this one's on function 3 Probably limited to how close I can get, but so that's that's plenty bright enough for. I mean, it, again, it, it's not supposed to be a headlight, and it does what I want. And when that flashes, it, it looks like it's turning almost white. It's really not that that bright. Um, if I were to turn my brightness down, you'd see it. It stays red, and it doesn't matter now if, if I were to change my direction. See, I just changed direction. See, it's still going. So when you consist this, and this one's not, but all I have to do is hit function 4. And it's going to start up. I can turn off the other one. Function 5 on this will turn on the interiors. But you're really 
It says it on, it's on. Yeah, it's on. There you go. You can see it coming through there. Uh, in person, it's it's a lot better, uh, easier to see. And like I said, when you're looking through, well, you can see the, the speaker in the center, but you can see the seats and the, the detail. Um, so then the last thing would be just how much brighter or louder. So that's like the um, caboose whistle that they tie into the airline. Uh, you, I don't think you get that. I'm not sure, but I don't. That sound may come with the um, regular sound car decoder. The, the regular sound car decoder has um, four functions, where the one that comes with it has uh, six. That would be the generator. So I've got mine turned up, I think it's about half volume. And like I said, it's a big difference. So, and the big difference is because of that opening down through the bottom. And also I had mentioned the current keeper. So if I'm if I hit a dirty spot in the track. So that's it. I hope that answers any questions. Um, I really enjoy the product now that it's at its full potential of what it can do. Um, I really enjoy Soundtracks products. It's just, in this case, uh, the two big reasons for buying a product like this would be the, the lighting and the sound and unfortunately, the way that Athern has designed this, uh, they really missed the mark. And uh, I really think that they could have taken a little extra time with this to get it right. And a lot more of us customers would be happy with it. As soon as I tore down into it, I knew right away it had nothing to do with what Soundtracks has done on this. Now, I can't speak for the NCE decoder. But this decoder that's in this one, the Soundtracks one, is awesome. And I really enjoy this product and other ones that they've made. So anyway, um, I hope this answers all questions. If you have any others, don't hesitate to ask. Um, the programming, I will hit that real quick because I have had people ask me. When it comes out of the box, it's just going to be on or off. So, in your instructions, if you choose not to move those wires, but to keep them in the factory locations, and add the resistor as I've shown, then you'd go under CV49 and 50, and you'd put a 139 
in for both those. Okay? And your... I'm the type that likes to know why, so I'll show you real quick. Um, 11. Well, it says right here for one. Use CV49 for forward, your forward um, light, and 50 for your, fun I'm sorry, function zero forward, function zero reverse. So that's why you're going to 49 and putting in a 139, and you're going to 50 and putting in a 139. Now, how did I come up with 139? It's a Fred. So it's 11 plus the fact that it is a, right here under step three, it is an LED. And you need to add, it's like, LEDs do not uh, work the same way as regular light bulbs. So to compensate for that, you put in a value of 128. In fact, on their locomotives, that's what they call it, LED compensation. It worked, oh, it says it here, LED compensation mode. So 128 plus Fred, which is 11, is 139. If you choose to move those two over and have control individually the way I did, when you move those two wires over, uh, you're not on these anymore. You're not on 49 or 50. You're on 53 and 54 for your function 3 and function 4. And you do the same thing. You would add the 11 to the 128 and under CV53 put a 139 and under CV54 put uh, 139. In that case, you can uh, you can literally have both of them on at the same time, or none, or whichever end you want. And I just like having that that control on it. So anyway, I think I've covered basically everything I I, I can on this. But if you have any questions. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.